Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're gonna talk about creating a terrain inside of Godot. So we're gonna go through the process of downloading our terrain add-on. We are going to go ahead and kind of go through the tools that you have. And then I'm going to show you guys a really cool way to export real world maps from the open map project out to Godot. So that way we can use real world terrain inside of Godot. So that way we don't have to go through all the work of actually creating our own terrain. We can just use what's out there. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and download our terrain tool. So let's go ahead and go to asset library and let's type in T-E-R terrain, T-E-R-A-I-N, and go ahead and grab the height map terrain by Zaylin. He's an awesome developer. Go ahead and check out his GitHub. He's an awesome guy and he has some really cool stuff out there. So go ahead and install that. Let's go ahead and install it. All right. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to um, create height map terrains inside of Godot. So first we're going to create a 3D scene. We're going to right click on our spatial node and add a child node and click on our spatial node. And you'll notice that our terrain doesn't actually exist. Now, why is that? Well, the reason why is because we didn't activate it. So we have to go to our project project settings. We need to go over to plugins and then enable the plugin here. All right, now let's go ahead and hit close and right click on our spatial node, add a child node. We are gonna click on our spatial node and we are going to come down to terrain, H terrain here. So go ahead and double click on that. And you will see it yelling at us saying, hey, you need to have a data directory. So if we go ahead and click on our H terrain and we come down here to our data directory right here. We click on our little uh, file browser here and let's just go ahead and create a folder and call it terrain data. Now you wanna make this something unique if you have multiple different levels that have different terrain datas. You'll wanna make sure that's something unique because all of your terrain data for that specific terrain is going to be put into this folder. So you wanna make sure that you have something special. But in my case, I'm just gonna call it terrain data and we're gonna say select current folder. Awesome. So now that we have that, it's a huge object. You can see right here just how big this object is. So that's sweet. So if we come over here, you can see that we have some tools up here. So the first one is build up. So if we click, you can see it's building up. The next one is build down. So if we click, it is now building down and you can see how it's subtracting from our train. We have this one, which is smoothing. So if I click on it, you'll see it smooths out my height and smooths out my cavities. So it makes our drain nice and smooth. This one is our level. So what it does is it actually levels it flat based off of the averages around it. So if you click down here and you start flattening it, it'll flatten it uh, based off of basically the averages of the entire circle. And then this one flattens to a specific height. So you can actually pick a height here and it'll flatten it to that height. So if you were to say something like, you know, 30, right? And then you were to do that, you can see it flattens it directly to that height, which is good and bad. It's super useful for creating something like a plateau. So now if I go ahead and flatten this all to zero, you can see how it kind of kicks it all down to zero. Simple enough. If I just go ahead and increase my brush size right here, and I just kind of start flattening that out. There we go. Now, we also have erosion. So if I were to create a small, you know, hill here or something, right? And then I were to click on erosion, you'll see how it kind of cuts it like a, uh, creates a point out of it. It almost erodes away at it, hence the name erosion, right? Which is kind of cool because it creates small little details. So if you want to create like little sandbars or if you want to create like peaks of a mountain or something, that's what this is really good for. Now, this one is texture paint. I'll go over that in a little bit. This one is color paint and it allows you to color paint it. So if you're doing something like a, a low poly style project or something like that, this would be cool for that. Uh, detail paint, which allows you to paint grass and things like that. And finally, cut holes, which allows you to legitimately cut holes into your 
Terrain Mesh, which is useful. I know it doesn't seem like it'd be useful, but it is extremely useful if you want to create like a river or something like that, and you want to just kind of cut a hole in it. Or if you want to make your terrain a specific shape, like if you're trying to do, you know, a circular map or something, you could do that with this. Now, what are some other options here? So if we look over here, we have terrain and we can import maps. We can generate maps. We can resize it. We can bake a global map. We can update our editor collision. We can generate a map. Don't do this unless you really know what you're doing. Export out our height map. We can do some look dev stuff and then some documentation stuff. And by the way, the documentation here is fantastic. So make sure that you check out the documentation as well. Now, if we go to generate, generate allows us to legitimately generate out a terrain based off of some noise. So you can actually see if you randomize the seat a bit and you kind of mess with your base height. Let's say I want it to be kind of like a, I don't know, like there's some water here or something. And I want to adjust my height map range to something like this and up my base height a bit more and then give myself a bit more, ah, a little less roughness, I think. Let me up my scale a bit, something like this. And let me adjust my curve a tiny bit. Give me some octaves, which will help increase the detail of the vol or the detail of the noise I'm using. And then there's erosion, which will erode away. And you can see how it creates those really cool peaks. And then we can give ourselves a higher weight if we want, which will kind of give it a little bit more peakness. And we can also adjust our slope, which will kind of smooth out our peaks a little. And then we can actually erode our slope direction. So we can actually change this to something like, you know, 100. And you can see how it moves everything to the left. If I do minus 100, it'll do the same thing, but move it all to the right. And I'll set that back to zero because I don't need it. If we invert it, it'll actually invert our erosion slope, which will make it tighter. And then we can do dilation, which will actually kind of smooth everything out. So if I hit apply, you'll see suddenly, bam, it's worked. Now, you really can't tell because there's no shadow in this scene. So let's go ahead and create some shadow. So let's add in a child node and add in a direction light. And we just kind of drop that in. And there we go. Now we got a little bit of, you know, light. And I'm going to actually add in some shadow and I am going to go ahead and click on directional shadow and do max distance. Just kind of increase my max distance to a pretty high number. So that way I can actually see what I'm doing. But you can see kind of what it's doing. It's making your scene, well, it's, it's kind of generating out a nice little terrain for you. And let me zoom in here and let me adjust this to something like that so it's a little bit more like daytime and you can see kind of what it looks like but what if we want to use real world map data to generate our terrain that is where a small tool called cs height map scar sky dark dot pl comes in so you guys can see right here if i expand this out for you all you guys can see it's a pretty cool little thing. It shows you a map and it shows you these little squares. Now there's a lot of changes that should be made to this. And I'm going to talk to the developer and see if I can make those changes and maybe release it on my website for us to use for terrain data. But right now we're just going to use this, how it is. And we're going to have to work around it a little bit, but what we can do is we can pick a location. So in my case, I'm going to pick Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and pick the Grand Canyon because everybody likes the Grand Canyon. It's one of the big things in the United States that everyone seems to enjoy. So let me go ahead and go find that. Now, the controls here are pretty simple. If you just click, it'll snap it to that location. So here's the Grand Canyon right here. And there is a very popular section here called the Horseshoe here in the Grand Canyon. It's right here. So you can see right here where the horseshoe is located. You can see how it kind of cuts and then it cuts back. Either that or I, I'm mistaken. It's probably like somewhere over here and I probably have it wrong. And people are going to be like, no, Mitch, you're dumb. It's it's right here, you know. But um, regardless, I'm just going to pull it from right here. This is a good location. So we'll 
drag this up and we'll say, I want all of this. So the entire thing is going to be exported here. And in uh, this tool, the green is like the playable area in um, City Skylines. And then this is like the backdrop. But in our case, all of it will be usable for what we're using it for. So we'll wanna hit on the info icon and we're gonna to wanna to hit auto settings. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna automatically adjust this for our use. And then we are going to go ahead and download our PNG or raw file. It's up to you on which one you want. The raw file has a little bit more data, but I'll just pull the PNG down cause I'm a little lazy and I don't wanna go through the process of uh, editing this later. So let's go ahead and click on the PNG file and we will save this height map out. Now, if we open up Godot and we click on our terrain and we click terrain, import maps, and we click on the three dots and we go out to our downloads location. So downloads and we go find our height map.png. We open that and we are gonna set our min height to zero and our max height to something like 200. I think 200 will be a good number. Now, if we want, we can use a splat map or a color map. So if you go in and you take this height map and you go and color it, you can actually go in and color it with different colors and then that'll associate it with materials. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and import this. So if we click import, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and pull that data and try to import this as a height map. You can see Bam, suddenly, wow, like our scene looks really cool. Look at that, you know? Um, now I'm gonna speed up our movement. If you hit, uh, if you're flying and you scroll up on your scroll wheel, it will speed up your flying speed. So you can see, look at that. That looks fantastic. Now, something that you'll notice, the first thing that you'll notice is A, the size of our, of our height map only got us to here. See how it cuts off and it drops down immediately. Now, this is kind of a bug, but not really. And also, you'll notice that our view is getting cut off. So let's go to view, settings, and then let's change this to something like 3000. And that'll let us see our whole scene here. Now, you can see it literally did not go all the way out. And the reason why is because we need to go to our terrain and look at our terrain size. You can see our terrain resolution is 2049. Now, unfortunately, 2049 is not the resolution of the image that we pulled in. If we actually open up Krita and we go ahead and we say, file open, and I need to resize this for you guys. Hold on one second. And we pull in our height map data here you will see that while this all works great, the size of this image, if we go to properties, is only 1081. So if we look at our screen here, you can see that it's only 1081. So it only takes up this little segment here. Now, now, if we want this to cover the entire screen here, we would need to scale the image up, but that might distort our little project here. So we have a choice. Do we want to scale this up and potentially distort our project, or would we rather just dealing with it and calling it a day? And that's a question that you guys need to answer for yourselves. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up, might as well, so that way it matches with what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna to go to image, scale image to new size, and I'm going to say 2048 by 2048. We're gonna go ahead and scale that up like that. And then we are going to go ahead and go to file, save as, and we are going to name it as height map underscore rescaled. And that's going to go ahead and output our new height map. So now if I come in here and I go terrain, whoops, I don't want to generate import map. And I go height map rescaled. And then I go ahead and I import it. It's going to take a little bit, but you will see that it now regenerated our entire level 
as a new height map. Now, we might want to uh, expand our height here because it looks like it's a little bit on the low side here now, but you get the idea. So if I come in here, train, import maps, and I set this to something like 300, we go ahead and import this. Let's see if that will make it look a little bit more exciting, right? A little bit more like, oh my goodness, this is a huge, you know, level. There we go. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that we have all these little bumps here and we're going to need to clean those up. So unfortunately, we're going to need to come through here and just kind of smooth out all of our little bumps and grooves and make it nice and nice and you know smooth and pretty you know what i mean but i'm not going to go through all that for you guys i don't think that you guys need to to watch me just kind of sit here and smooth things out for an hour um but you guys definitely can if you guys want to you can see how smoothing it out is necessary now one of the things that we can do to help this out first of all is change our directional light so let's make our directional light Woo! there we go make our directional light kind of a higher a higher shot and let's move it this way just a touch there we go and that should help us make everything look a little nicer let me scale this up to move faster but you can see that everything's still kind of blindingly bright. So let's come in here and let's add an environment node. And go ahead and add in a new environment. And you'll see suddenly everything starts looking a little less bright. And we are going to go ahead and add in some ambient fog just to kind of help it out a little bit. And we will add in a background. Let's add in a sky and let's add in a procedural sky. Now you'll see that suddenly everything's way too bright again. So let's come down here and add in a tone map of ACES is too bright. So filmetic maybe. Let's bring down our exposure a tiny bit maybe. I don't really like it. So let's see if I just go to linear. How does that look? We're going to have to adjust our exposure I think think so let's see if we adjust i'm doing all this on the fly by the way I, I did not plan this out so i apologize in advance so if i change this to aces and let me oh that's way too bright not ah, good enough that's good enough for me i'm not gonna complain too much adjust the lighting so it looks a little bit more dynamic something like that there we go so, you know, you can create a pretty cool little alien planet here. Maybe we can color grade it a tiny bit to make it look nicer or something like that. But you guys get the idea, right? And actually, let me change the directional light to be slightly orange as well. Now I'm letting my art skills dictate the uh, scene a bit, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so now that we have our terrain built, let's go ahead and do some texturing of it. That's where this little... Um, painting tool comes in handy now we don't actually have a texture to paint you can see by looking right here there isn't really a texture for us to paint so let's go ahead and download some textures that we can use to paint so for this case i'm going to be using cc zero textures and it says oh, our tumblr version let's click here and go to ambient cg it looks like they changed it to ambient cg so let's go ahead and explore their assets and let's grab some ground textures here. So you can see here's a bunch of different ground textures. So I'm gonna pull down this one, let's say. So let's pull that down. I'll just grab the 1K version. I don't need anything special. So let's pull that down. And then let's pull down this one to help us with some variation. And then let's pull down a cliff texture of some kind so let's see do we have a cliff like texture we'll pull this one down i guess so we'll pull this down here and we need one more texture so let's go ahead and pull down i don't know uh let's do a little bit of green i guess so let's pull this one down all right so now that we have those pulled down let's go ahead and extract them and i'll just fast forward through this but you got to go ahead and extract all of these all right, so now that I have all these extracted, let's grab all four textures. 
Let's bring up Godot, tab back over, and drag these in to our project. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to import all of our textures. So you'll see it's going to pull them all in. And now that we have all of these textures pulled in, let's go ahead and import them into our project or into our. So now that we have these textures, let's go ahead and import them into our terrain engine. So if we hit import and you can see it allows us to grab multiple textures here, let's hit the little plus icon, hit load ground, and let's pick our ground color, load, grab our bump map load grab our normal map and load grab our roughness map and now let's go ahead and hit the plus icon load peel this up and let's grab our ground 29 let's grab our color map and you'll see it automatically pick those up because it is using a unified color language or unified texture language click load peel up and go to ground 35 and let's pull that one. And it looks like that one worked as well. And then let's finally pull in texture three and let's pull in our rock texture here. Let's grab that color and there we go. So let's go ahead and import all those into texture sets and you will see it's going to do some calculations and some magic, and some compression and some stuff to make it super efficient. And it'll say importing is completed. Awesome. So now that importing is complete, let's go ahead and click on close. And you can see that I strategically did this so that we have our first texture, our second texture, our third texture, and our cliff texture. And what is a cliff texture? Well, a cliff texture is a texture that uses triplanar mapping. So triplanar mapping is a way to stop stretching from happening. So if you look right here, you see how this massive stretch right here? That doesn't work for most uh, games, right? You see that and you're like, well, that's ugly, right? Well, that's what triplanar mapping kind of comes in and cleans that up and makes it look good, right? So first things first, let's click on our sand texture. I'm going to show you if you just go ahead and click and paint. Well, that's weird. Nothing seems to happen, right? So how do we fix the painting issue? Well, what we can do is we can go to terrain, we can go to resize, and we can go ahead and click on the center and hit apply. And doing that, if we click, now we can go ahead and paint. Now, remember how I told you about that cliff texture, right? If we come over here and you can see how this is all stretching, if I paint here, well, the texture is stretching, right? Why is that? Well, if we come down here, you can see that there is a U triplanar here under our shader, shader parameters. If I click that on, you'll see suddenly that starts to work. So we can actually paint in our cliff texture here. Do that. Now, some other things that are over here that's really cool is we can actually change our shader type to like low poly if we want like a low poly texture. So you can see how it looks like a low poly. Or if I change this something like classic four, which gives us like a roughness map and all of that attached to it or i can just go with straight classic light which is kind of like for you know phones and mobile devices but i'll go with classic four it makes everything a little bit nicer and um if i want to and i think this is a little beyond the the scope of what what i'm discussing here but you can also go into like array multi splat 16 and multi splat 16 light multi splat 16 is 16 textures array is theoretically unlimited textures and uh multi splat 16 light just doesn't apply roughness or um shininess to stuff now some other things that you might notice is this blends awful look at this we put some sand here right so we said hey this is sand but you can see it just kind of ends well, they also have this really cool thing called depth blending. You can see how depth blending, instead of it just fading out, it actually blends in a little bit to help it look nicer. See that? So that's something that's really super useful. And also something that we've noticed is if you drag this in here for a cliff texture, you'll notice that it's affecting this area as well. And we might not necessarily want that. So we have this thing called slope limit. And what slope limit allows us to do is we can pull this back to like here, let's say, and we can paint and it will only affect areas that are that specific slope, which is super useful when you're creating 
cliffs on the side of a of a terrain. You can just kind of paint it and it looks good. And if I want, I can come in here and it works the exact opposite as well. So if I drag this down like this, I can paint. You can see it kind of blends that back up into itself. Now you can look at this and kind of see there's a pattern here. So let's go ahead and fix that with tile reduction. So we can actually turn this and it will reduce our tiling of our scene here. You can see how it pops everything and reduces the tiling of it. So that's really all I have for you guys today. I know that this tutorial is kind of scattershot, but I mean, it's a pretty scattershot topic. Um, so, hey, you know, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I'm here to make content for you guys. Now, this video was a viewer suggestion, so I do listen to your guys' comments and I do listen to your guys' suggestions. So please let me know. Also, if you guys have any questions or just want to join a cool community, drop by my Discord. The link's in the description below. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. But that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all next time. Thanks.